right now, let's bring in Main Street Asset, uh, their management, the CIO, Aaron Gibbs. Aaron, let's, uh, I'll pick up on this thing, the earnings uh, situation, the seasonality. You know what, let me go back to this first chart because it really has been uh, absolutely amazing, the, uh, the sort of this, the, the seasonality. We're right here, the third year of a presidential cycle. Yep. It's worked to a T. Can it keep going? No, absolutely. I think we could still have another couple weeks just when we're looking at fears, just like you showed. And so I don't think it's going to happen, let's say, immediately, as in it's going to start off at the very beginning of October. But I think if we're really looking at fourth quarter absolute returns, I think we should be looking at ending the quarter up. Well. Ending the quarter up. Yeah, because right, we so haven't a year broken in rally, a lot of then. Yeah. A year in rally. I do believe that. Okay, so the script rally. is almost there. Yeah. The wild card has been the bond market. I yes. mean, these bond yields are really, really absolutely amazing. Uh, and, and But one of the things that, that's been interesting, well, before we get to the bond market, I want to talk one more thing for the audience. So this is another thing that's really intriguing, right? When, when, when the September is down, obviously September was a really ugly month. Yep. The rest, the rest of the quarter is up pretty good. Median up 5%, average up 2%, and it works 79% of the time. So again, history's on our side. Absolutely. I think the, the two factors that we have to worry about, for me, the two biggest concerns are, one, the Fed gets more hawkish, and we think that you know rates are going to go even higher. And that, as we know, adjusts everybody's thinking. The other thing I would be increasing consumer weakness, because we have been holding up well because of the strong U.S. consumer. And I think that would be a real worry that we could take recession fears really become real. Well, but can you have both, though? I mean, one is going to have to give. It, it, yeah. if, the, if the consumer doesn't get weak, <laughs> the Fed's going to get hawkish. Exactly. So which one, which one is preferable? Uh, I would say at this point, probably the consumer, just because we don't want the Fed to raise those rates and right. reset valuations right. all over again. All right, let's talk about the bond market. So this drawdown, this is the longest, sharpest drawdown in bond market history. 38 months, yep. bonds peaked in August of 2020, down 17 percent. If we had gone back into, let's say, July 2020, and you said this is what the next three years are going to look like, I could have asked a million people on Wall Street. They all say, hell no, you're out of your it, mind. Over three right. years of a, bear, bear, a bond bear market? <laughs> Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah, it's no one saw this coming. So then what does it mean? I mean, is it an anomaly? Is this a new paradigm? I mean, does this, is this the beginning of a 40-year bear market? Or it's just unique because of the unique circumstances we've had? I think it's very unique in that inflation has been so much stickier than we've ever seen before. And this is why we're over three years into this bond bear market. And I think, you know, everybody has to be prepared that this could easily go another nine months. Wow. Um, so what do you do then? How do you how do you how are you jiggering your portfolio? So you I know that's start, a technical you, Wall Street term, look, jiggering. You, you start getting fancy with duration. So whether you're talking, that means you know, short term, one, three, five years to your long terms, your 10, 20, 30 years. In general, your prices don't move as much when you're talking about short term, but you get lower yields. In this case, having less downside on the actual bond prices right. is useful, even right. if you're getting a lower yield. And so I would say this is where you switch Everyone's to loading up on these bills now, right? The, yep. the, 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 I saw some number, it's outrageous. Everyone, to your point, they want to get in short term, get that yield, get in and out. It's a safe haven right now. Right. Uh, speaking of things changing, the 6040 portfolio from 1975 uh, to 2000 was unstoppable. Absolutely unstoppable. Yep. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry, it was unstoppable from uh, from 2000 to recently, but this is the last time it didn't work. We're in a similar situation where it's where you have stocks so significantly outperforming treasuries that you know it was unfavorable for 6040 portfolios. I did this a lot on the show last year. Almost everyone said, "Yeah, hey, to come back, it will work." Are you telling? Are your clients okay with the 6040 portfolio? 60 percent bonds, 40 percent. I mean, 60 percent stocks, 40 percent bonds. No, I strongly believe in being more tactical. I, I mean, I think. A, you just need to adjust as you're getting older and what your cash flow needs are. I mean, I take a much But that would more... be more bonds according to the old script. I mean, would you be even in more bonds than 40% of your portfolio? I mean, I think if you're over retirement age, let's say if you're over 75, I think it's... What if you're a young whippersnapper, though, like me? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. For younger. And look, 60-40 means a traditional you're 40, you're 40 years old, 60% equities, 40% bonds. I, I think if you're 40 years old and you're not expecting to need that cash flow for 20, 30 years, you could easily be in 100% equities, you just have to be willing to take on that risk right. that for those ups and downs. Right. And we know these past three years, right. those ups and downs can be big. But again, though, these because these things are run in secular cycles, we can go, we went, you know, 75 to 2000, it was awful. And yep. from
from 2000 to 220. It was an amazing portfolio. Now it's starting to look awful again. So maybe the risk is just getting too comfortable by paint by numbers in 60-40. I, yeah, I believe you've got to be smarter. I think things are constantly changing. You can't always follow rules from the 70s, right. and you need to adjust your playbook. All right, good stuff. All right. Thank you very much. All right, folks.